Hello and welcome to this quick video about this piece of software here called GyroFlow. This is a free way to stabilize your footage if you have some kind of gyro data about how the camera was moving when the video was being filmed. Now, this has been out a little while now. We're on version 1.1. Lots of content creators did tons of videos when it came out. That slew of content seems to have really died down. Now, I didn't make any videos on it because I thought that everyone else had kind of covered it. However, in a recent video that I did about the Thumb Pro from Runcam, their new action camera that includes a gyro, uh, Dave Webster, Daniel Carlson, and Wynn Davis asked about this. So I thought, you know what? Let me actually make a quick little video. So if you're already a GyroFlow user, you know how it works. None of this is going to be news to you, but I thought it'd be fun just to show you how to use it with something like the Thumb Pro because it is now incredibly easy and it's getting better all the time. To download it, download it for free. Click on the download button, link to this stuff all down below. And then down here we have a Linux, Mac and Windows version. You download the, the zip file and then that zip file contains all of the files that you need. You just copy all of these into a directory. Once you have, then you can just double click on gyro flow and run it. You don't need to install it, which is fantastic. Once gyro flow is running, it's a little bit complicated. Let's close up all the side pieces. You have this side, which is the input panel for the video and gyro information, and also the lens profile for the camera that you have. That can get rid of distortion, which is very handy. And then you have the actual panel here where you see the results of the stabilization. And then round here, you have things that you can do to change how the stabilization is working. To synchronize the gyro data to the video, the how aggressive you want the stabilization to be, how you want the video to be exported, which you do down here at the bottom. So first of all, let's import a video. So we'll open a file and we'll open one from that Runcam Pro. So let's just order the very, very first video I ever did just to test the gyro data. Now it's loaded the video file. You can see it here, Thumb Pro 0000.mp4. It contains gyro data in that directory alongside the file itself, which is the video, there's the gyro data. Now you can load this in separately by saying open file, and there's the gyro data alongside each of the videos. But if it is already in the directory that you're getting the video from, and it has the same name, gyro flows really clever, it'll automatically load it. So here's the video that we're interested in at the top. This is the one that I shot. This is my kind of build area. And down here is the gyro traces. So if I just turn off two, so that is how the X gyro is moving. That is how the Y gyro is moving and so on. So the three of them all work together. Now, the cool thing about modern cameras like this, GoPros are the same, things like the Runcam Thumb Pro and others actually record the gyro data automatically. So it's really easy to then use gyro flow to stabilize everything because the start of the recording of the video is exactly the same place as the start recording of the gyro data. So if you have a situation like this, then you know what? You're kind of most of the way there already. If I hit play, you can kind of see weird stuff going on here in the preview screen. Don't worry about this thing at the top. We'll get rid of it in a moment. If I just zoom out just a little bit, there we go. We can actually see that gyro flow is actually moving the frame around to try and stabilize the image. So as I'm kind of moving the camera to see how well it's gonna work, look, it's trying to keep everything in the right place. However, what you'll notice is that things are kind of being skewed and changed. And that's because the distortion from the lens isn't being corrected for. And that's what the lens profile bit, the last part of the input side is for. Now we can open a file uh, and there are lots and lots of different versions. If we go back into the gyro flow directory, here's the camera presets. Here's all the different camera types that are here. GoPro, Sony, Foxeer, DJI, all kinds of stuff. Now I'm interested in the Runcam one. So let's just uh, to get that R on the keyboard for Runcam. There's all the different Runcam versions. 
we can hit Runcam Pro. So you can actually create a profile if you haven't got one for your particular camera. It's relatively easy. You do create new, and then you have this whole little system here that you go through. Uh, I'm not gonna cover that in this, but you can basically open a calibration target like this. You film it with the video, and then you go through this process and it works it all out. It's incredibly clever. It's what I did to get this one. However, now if we zoom out even more, so you have this really weird kind of skewed effect, but what it's done is it's moved all the pixels around so that everything is actually square how it should be. So now if we zoom in a little bit, do it like that, you still want to see the black borders. So now if I play it, you can see that the pieces in the image aren't being heavily distorted because it's all happened. So that's all the input stuff. Now, the cool thing is, is because the gyro data and the video information are automatically synced because they're from the camera. This is why it's working straight out of the box. If the gyro information that you have imported, because you can just pick it and just import it from somewhere else, like from, I don't know, a black box log from your flight controller, or maybe even another camera that's already on the model, then you can use auto sync up here. The rough gyro offset is used to, um, to tell you where or not the start is in case the gyro data and the video data don't start exactly the same time and you can sync everything up. Now I'm not going to run this, uh, there's quite a few options in here, but what it does is it moves the image around, tries to optically track how everything is moving and interpolate what the X, Y and Z gyros look like and then overlays them at the bottom. And then you can zoom in here and you can actually see how the the traces match. Gyroflow is really clever and can do that all for you. Other options in here as well then is the stabilization option. This is your field of view. As you can see here, because uh, the lens is relatively distorted, let's just go back to somewhere that's reasonably flat. There we go. Because the lens is relatively distorted, uh, we're gonna have to zoom in quite a way in order to get rid of those black bars. So now if I play it, hopefully, those black bars won't appear in the frame. And it definitely doesn't, it's doing a reasonable job. We had a little bit at the top. So I might have to zoom in even more. But what's happening here is we're losing a lot of the pixels that we captured, which is why I would recommend when using this, I would record, even if you want to have the output in 1080p, record in 4K, because if you think about it, we're actually losing a huge amount of pixels so that we can get everything stabilized. You can change the amount of smoothness in here by increasing this number. So you can increase it and then play it back and see what difference it makes. Um, I would go, the default's actually not bad, but I would play with that. You'll find that as you increase the smoothness, you might have to zoom in a little bit more. So you can play around with these couple of sliders and this is much, much, much easier than it used to be. There's also the option to have things like dynamic zooming set. So we can try and zoom out a little bit more and try and have it so that it's trying to get away. See, we're still getting black borders. Uh, so something like that might work. That, all those are the things that you can do. And then we could actually do things like even do the lens correction strength. You know what, let's have a look at what that does on this latest version. So that's what it was like originally. That's actually, that might be okay. We go in like that and play it. And this is the fun thing, you can just, mess around with it until you are completely happy and you can see it all working. Last thing to do, export settings. So we can decide how we want it all set, what kind of settings that you want, and also what kind of uh, size and bit rates that you want as well. And then once you're happy with all that, then you can actually hit the export button and it will save it onto your computer and you can have a look. Now I potentially would play with this, with the cameras that you like, spend a happy hour 
optimizing it for how it works for the cameras that you are interested in. Only a couple of things down here, advanced, uh, this is just how the application's running more than anything else, and you can change all of these different pieces. But hopefully that is interesting for you. This is a fantastic application that allows you to take some pretty scabby video and to smooth it. And although this might not look like it is super smooth, and we can change all of that through all of this, if you compare it with what it looks like before stabilization is added, it's not going to make it so that it's always pointing in the same direction, but it's gonna get rid of an awful lot of that movement that you encounter when you are flying or carrying a camera about. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.